Daily Reading Through the Bible, Week 14, Day 1, Joshua, Chapters 14 through 17, Luke, Chapter 17. The scriptures quoted are from the NET Bible, netbible.com, copyright 1996 2019, used with permission from Biblical Studies Press, LLC, all rights reserved. Joshua 14. The following is a record of the territory assigned to the Israelites in the land of Canaan by Eleazar the priest, Joshua son of Nun, and the Israelite tribal leaders. The land assignments to the nine and a half tribes were made by drawing lots, as the Lord had instructed Moses. Now Moses had assigned land to the two and a half tribes east of the Jordan, but he assigned no land to the Levites. The descendants of Joseph were considered as two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. The Levites were allotted no territory, though they were assigned cities in which to live, along with the grazing areas for their cattle and possessions. The Israelites followed the Lord's instructions to Moses and divided up the land. The men of Judah approached Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb, son of Jepunia, the Kezinite, said to him, you know what the Lord said about you and me to Moses, the man of God, at Kadesh Barnea. I was forty years old when Moses, the Lord's servant, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy on the land, and I brought back to him an honest report. My countrymen, who accompanied me, frightened the people, but I remained loyal to the Lord my God. That day, Moses made this solemn promise. Surely the land on which you walked will belong to you and your descendants permanently, for you remained loyal to the Lord your God. So now, look, the Lord has preserved my life, just as he promised. These past forty-five years since the Lord spoke these words to Moses, while Israel traveled through the wilderness. See here, I am today eighty-five years old. Today I am still strong as when Moses sent me out. I can fight and go about my daily activities with the same energy I had then. Now, assign me this hill country that the Lord promised me at that time. No doubt you heard then that the Anakites live there in large fortified cities. But assuming the Lord is with me, I will conquer them, as the Lord promised. Joshua asked God to empower Caleb, son of Jepuna, and assigned him Hebron. So Hebron remains the assigned land of Caleb, son of Jepunah the Kesanite, to this very day, because he remained loyal to the Lord God of Israel. Hebron used to be called Kiriath Arba. Arba was a famous Anakite. Then the land was free of war. Joshua 15. The land allotted to the tribe of Judah by its clans reached to the border of Edom, to the wilderness of Zin in the Negev far to the south. Their southern border started at the southern tip of the Salt Sea, extended south of the Scorpion Ascent, crossed to Zin, went up from the south to Kadesh Barnea, crossed to Hezron, went up to Adar, and turned toward Karka. It then crossed to Asmon, extended to the stream of Egypt, and ended at the Mediterranean Sea. This was their southern border. The eastern border was the Salt Sea to the mouth of the Jordan River. The northern border started north of the Salt Sea, at the mouth of the Jordan, went up to Beth Hogala, crossed north of Beth Araba, and went up to the stone of Bahan, son of Reuben. It then went up to Debir from the valley of Achor, turning northward to Gilgal, which is opposite the path of Adumimim south of the valley, crossed to the waters of En Shemesh and extended to En Rogel. It then went up the valley of Ben Hinnom to the slope of the Jebusites on the south, that is, Jerusalem, going up to the top of the hill opposite the valley of Ben Hinnom to the west, which is at the end of the valley of the Raphaites to the north. It then went from the top of the hill to the spring of the waters of Neptoah, extended to the cities of Mount Ephron, and went to Bela, that is, Kiriath Jerim. It then turned from Bela westward to Mount Seir, crossed to the slope of Mount Jerim, on the north, that is, Kesselon, descended 
to Beth Shemesh and crossed to Timnah. It then extended to the slope of Akron to the north, went toward Shikaron, crossed to Mount Belah, extended to Jebneel, and ended at the sea. The western border was the Mediterranean Sea. These were the borders of the tribe of Judah and its clans. Caleb, son of Jepunah, was assigned Kiriath Arba, that is, Hebron, within the tribe of Judah, according to the Lord's instructions to Joshua. Arba was the father of Anak. Caleb drove out from there three Anakites, Shishai, Ahaman, and Talmai, descendants of Anak. From there he attacked the people of Debir. Debir used to be called Kiriath Sefer. Caleb said, To the man who attacks and captures Kiriath Sefer, I will give my daughter Aksa as a wife. When Athenel, son of Kenaz, Caleb's brother, captured it, Caleb gave Aksa, his daughter, to him as a wife. One time Aksa came and charmed her father, so that she could ask him for some land. When she got down from her donkey, Caleb said to her, What would you like? She answered, Please give me a special present, since you have given me land in the Negev, now give me springs of water. So he gave her both the upper and lower springs. This is the land assigned to the tribe of Judah by its clans. These cities were located at the southern extremity of Judah's tribal land, near the border of Edom, Kebziel, Edir, Jagur, Kina, Demona, Edada, Kadesh, Hezor, Ithnan, Zipa, Telim, Beloath, Hezor, Hedata, Kiriath, Hezron, that is, Hezor, Emam, Shima, Molada, Hazar Gada, Heshbon, Beth Palet, Hazar Shual, Beersheba, Beziothia, Bala, Aim, Ezim, El Tolad, Kasil Horma, Ziklag, Madmana, San Sana, Leboth, Aim, Ain, and Ramon. A total of twenty nine cities and their towns. These cities were in the foothills, Eshtual, Zora, Ashna, Zanoa, and Ganim, Tapua, Anam, Jarmuth, Adulam, Soko, Azka, Shariam, Edathiam, and Gedera, or Gederothiam, a total of fourteen cities and their towns. Zenan, Hadasha, Migalgad, Delian, Mizpah, Jokthil, Lakish, Bukath, Eglon, Kabon, Lamas, Kitlish, Gedaroth, Beth Dagan, Nama, and Mekeda, a total of sixteen cities and their towns, Libna, Ether, Ashan, Ephthia, Ashna, Nezib, Kela, Akzib, and Maresha, a total of nine cities and their towns. Ekron and its surrounding towns and settlements. From Ekron westward, all those in the vicinity of Ashdod and their towns. Ashdod with its surrounding towns and settlements, and Gaza with its surrounding towns and settlements, as far as the stream of Egypt and to the border of the Mediterranean Sea. These cities were in the hill country. Shamir, Jatir, Soka, Dana, Kiriath, Sana, that is Debir, Enab, Eshtemoa, Anim, Goshen, Holan, and Giloa, a total of eleven cities in their towns. Arab, Duma, Ishan, Janib, Beth Tapua, Afka, Humta, Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, and Zeror, a total of nine cities in their towns. Maon, Carmel, Zippa, Juta, Zariel, Jogdiem, Zenoa, Cain, Gabia, and Timna, a total of ten cities in their towns. Halhual, Bethzur, Gedor, Merath, 
Beth Anoth, and Elkan, a total of six cities in their towns, Kiriath Baal, that is Kiriath Jerim, and Rabbah, a total of two cities in their towns. These cities were in the wilderness Beth Araba, Midin Sekah, Nibshan, the city of salt, and Ed Gedai, a total of six cities and their towns. The men of Judah were unable to conquer the Jebusites living in Jerusalem. The Jebusites live with the people of Judah in Jerusalem to this very day. Joshua 16. The land allotted to Joshua's descendants extended from the Jordan at Jericho to the waters of Jericho to the east, through the desert and on up from Jericho into the hill country of Bethel. The southern border extended from Bethel to Luz and crossed to Archite territory at Etroth. It then descended westward to Jephelthite territory as far as the territory of lower Beth Haran and Gezir and ended at the sea. Joseph's descendants, Manasseh and Ephraim, were assigned their land. The territory of the tribe of Ephraim by its clans included the following. The border of their assigned land to the east was Etroth Adar, as far as Upper Beth Haran. It then extended on to the Mekmetheth on the north. It turned eastward to Tanath Shiloh and crossed it on the east to Genoa. It then descended from Genoa to Etroth and Nera, touched Jericho, and extended to the Jordan River. From Tapua it went westward to the valley of Cana and ended at the sea. This is the land assigned to the tribe of Ephraim by its clans. Also included were the cities set apart for the tribe of Ephraim, within Manasseh's territory along with their towns. The Ephraimites did not conquer the Canaanites living in Gezir. The Canaanites live among the Ephraimites to this very day and do hard labor as their servants. Joshua 17. The tribe of Manasseh, Joseph's firstborn son, was also allotted land. The descendants of Machir, Manasseh's firstborn and the father of Gilead, received land, for they were warriors. They were assigned Gilead and Bashan. The rest of Manasseh's descendants were also assigned land by their clans, including the descendants of Ebizur, Helek, Esriel, Shechem, Hefer, and Shemida. These are the male descendants of Manasseh, son of Joseph, by their clans. Now Zeliophiad, son of Hefer, son of Gilead, son of Machir, son of Manasseh, had no sons, only daughters. These are the names of his daughters. Mala, Noah. Hagla, Milka, and Tarza. They went before Eleazar the priest, Joshua son of Nun, and the leaders, and said, The Lord told Moses to assign us land among our relatives. So Joshua assigned them land among their uncles, as the Lord had commanded. Manasseh was allotted ten shares of land, in addition to the land of Gilead and Bashan, east of the Jordan, for the daughters of Manasseh were assigned land among his sons. The land of Gilead belonged to the rest of the descendants of Manasseh. The border of Manasseh went from Esher to Mechmethath, which is near Sechem. It then went south toward those who live by En Tapua. The land of Tapua belonged to Manasseh, but Tapua, located on the border of Manasseh, belonged to the tribe of Ephraim. The border then descended southward to the valley of Cana. Ephraim was assigned cities there among the cities of Manasseh, but the border of Manasseh was north of the valley and ended at the sea. Ephraim's territory was to the south and Manasseh's to the north. The sea was Manasseh's western border, and their territory touched Asher on the north and Issachar on the east. Within Issachar's and Asher's territories, Manasseh was assigned Beth Shein, Iblim, the residence of Dor, the residence of Endor, the residence of Tanakh, the residence of Megiddo, the three of Nepeth, and the towns surrounding all these cities. But the men of Manasseh were unable to conquer these cities. The Canaanites managed to remain in those areas. Whenever the Israelites were strong militarily, they forced the Canaanites to do hard labor, but they never totally conquered them. The descendants of Joseph said to Joshua, 
why have you assigned us only one tribal allotment after all we have many people for until now the lord has enabled us to increase in number joshua replied to them since you have so many people go up into the forest and clear out a place to live in the land of the Perizzites and Rephaites. If the hill country of Ephraim is too small for you, the descendants of Joseph said, The whole hill country is inadequate for us, and the Canaanites living down in the valley in Beth Shean, and its surrounding towns, and in the valley of Jezreel, have chariots with iron-rimmed wheels. Joshua said to the family of Joseph, to both Ephraim and Manasseh, You have many people and great military strength. You will not have just one tribal allotment. The whole hill country will be yours. Though it is a forest, you can clear it, and it will be entirely yours. You can conquer the Canaanites, though they have chariots with iron-rimmed wheels and are strong. Luke 17 Jesus said to his disciples, Stumbling blocks are sure to come, but woe to the one through whom they come. It would be better for him to have a millstone tied around his neck and be thrown into the sea than for him to cause one of these little ones to sin. Watch yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. If he repents, forgive him. Even if he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times returns to you, saying, I repent, you must forgive him. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. So the Lord replied, If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this black mulberry tree, Be pulled out by the roots and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Would any one of you say to your slave who comes in from the field after plowing or shepherding sheep, Come at once and sit down for a meal? Won't the master instead say to him, Get my dinner ready? and make yourself ready to serve me while I eat and drink, then you may eat and drink. He won't thank the slave, because he did what he was told, will he? So you too, when you have done everything you were commanded to do, should say, We are slaves undeserving of special praise. We have only done what was our duty. Now, on the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten men with leprosy met him. They stood at a distance, raised their voices, and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went along, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He fell with his face to the ground at Jesus' feet, and thanked him. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus said, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to turn back and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to the man, Get up and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Now at one point the Pharisees asked Jesus when the kingdom of God was coming. So he answered, The kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed. Nor will they say, Look, here it is, or there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is in your midst. Then he said to his disciples, The days are coming when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. The people will say to you, Look, there he is, or Look, here he is. Do not go out or chase after them, for just like the lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. But first, he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so too it will be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, they were being given in marriage. Right up to the day Noah entered the ark, then the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, just as it was in the days of Lot, people were eating and drinking, buying, selling, planting, building. But on the day Lot went out from Sodom, 
fire and sulphur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all it will be the same on the day the son of man is revealed on that day any one who is on the roof with his goods in the house must not come down to take them away and likewise the person in the field must not turn back remember lot's wife whoever tries to keep his life will lose it but whoever loses his life will preserve it i tell you in that night there will be two people in one bed one will be taken and the other left there will be two women grinding grain together one will be taken and the other left then the disciples said to him where lord he replied to them where the dead body is there the vultures will gather the next daily reading through the bible week 14 day 2 joshua chapters 18 through 21 psalm 15 luke chapter 18 the scriptures quoted are from the net bible netbible.com copyright 1996 2019 used with permission from biblical studies press llc all rights reserved